Амрын дунд сарын шинийн тэтэн байгаа. Тэгэхээр хүүтэн биш байгаа учраас өнөөдөр цайгаар үлчлэхгүй. За, бэлэн байна уу? Юмсуудыг тал талаас нь харахад бэлэн байгаа юу тий? Бурхны арга зам, бурхны арга барилууд, бурхны бидний амьдралаар хийж байгаа зүйлүүд юусын байх болно? Яагаад бол юм болгон дуусцсын дараагаа таны амьдрал амархан байх болно. Таны хизээч үзээгүй бас хизээс сонсч ирсэн мөртлөө хүрч чадаагүй болгоно. Та өөр юм болгож авах болно гэсэн үг. Тэгэхээр энэ энэ удаагийн энд ирсэн зүйлс энд яригдж байгаа зүйлсүүд би бүр таны би махуудад одоо бүр шинхэхийн тулд орж ирсэн байгаа шүү. Яагаад бол сүнсний хэсгүүд бид нүг ч хэлсэн байгвэл талбайгаа сайхан цэвэрлээ чи энэ талбайгаа хянаа чи гэсэн одоо өнөөдөр талбайгаа сайхан зулгаан зай юу тэгээ талбай дотор ургасан зарим нэг сүүлүүд бидний амгийнх зоодог зүйл чинь тэр охгүй да юу вэ гэвэл муу зүйл чинь биш таны хамгийн сайн гэдэг үздэг бүх зүйл чинь гэсэн үг сайн гэж өөрийгөө тооцоолж байгаа тэр болгон чинь миний талбайдаа ургачаад хог болоод харагдаад байгаа хог болоод ногшороод бүр дахиж мургуулахгүй байхгүй тэгээ хамаг шимтэж ээл юм аа бүр айгүй төвхтэй байгаа да гих мэчлэнгээр тэгээ нэг талаас нь харахад үнэхээр үрд үнтэй байна Тэгэхээр бид нэг тал талаас нь бурхан бидний юмсыг харж ирсэн гэдэг шиг энэ удаа яг ийм цаг явуулж байгаа шүү. Оюун санаагаа сайхан төвлөрүүлээр сэтгэлээ сайхан бэлтээр бурхан үнэхээр юмсууд өөрөө хийгээсэ гэж бодож байна. Үг хэлэгд нь харин та аав. Тэгээд тэр таны дотроос гадаршаа гарах үед одоо сая бүх зүйл таних байх болно гэсэн үг. Та бэлэн байгаа юу? Амин. Үнэхээр бид бэлэн байгаа. Яагаад бэл бид улс үндэстэнхэн төлөө бос чирэг цаг болсон цаг ирсэн үнэхээр юу үсэн цаг ирсэн үндэстэн маань өөрчлөлт ирэх цаг ирсэн үндэстэнд шин зүйлсүүд хийгдэж эхэлж байгаа тэгээ энэний эхэллийг нь та бид нэг тавихгүй л өөр хин ч тавихгүй гэсэн үг бид хинээс шайх хэрэггүй аа өөр сүм цуглаан хин нэг нь мэдээж тавьж байгаа гэхдээ бид нар бас юу нэг их л гар хөл оролцогч чинь нэг нь байх хэвээр тэр утгаараа бид нарт энэ зүйл энэ үүрэг өгөгдсөн байгаа За энэ энэ ороо би цаг идээд яах вэ? Бүгд нар хамтдаа бас ээ. Зүрсхлийн эзний өмнө бэлдээ. За хэрэгцээтэй байгаа бус миний хүсдэг зүйлийг биш. Харин бурхан өөрийнхөө хүсдэг зүйл надад өгөөсөй гэж бодож байна. Үнэхээр бурхны цаг ирсэн учраас надад тэр зүйл үнэхээр хэрэгтэй байна. Хийцээ ч миний юм биш харин түүний хүсэл биесэн багт би бэлтгийн тулд би ч зөв бэлэн баймаар байна гэсэн Би оюун санаага бэлтмээр байна. Би зүрсхлээ бэлтмээр байна. Ирж байгаа цаг үед, ирж байгаа бүхэлд нөхцөл байдлуудад даван тулд чадхын тулд би өөрийгөө бэлтсэн байх хэрэгтэй байна. Тэгэхээр бол бурхан надад өөрийнхөө зөвлөлүүдийг дүүргэж өгч цаг ирсэн. Халалуя. Тэгээд түүний За, хайртууд минь өрөө минь. Таныг харахад баяртай байна. I thought that uh, only my city has traffic jams. Аа зөвхөн манай хоттол одоо зам бүглэртийн бодлоо шүү дээ. So that tells you that uh, this country is really growing. There's traffic jams now. Та нар айгүй олуулаа болж байгаа нь харагдаж байна, төгжрээд байна. So now uh, we have until about 9 this evening. Өнөөдөр өнөөдөр энэ орой хүртэл So we we'll get right into it and then uh, I hope that we can have a break and uh, I saw uh, Mungun uh, Karas with coffees and crackers. Ямар ч гэсэн энэ орой хүртэл бид нэр энд хүрээд ирсэн юм чинь явж байгаа дараад нь тэр болон лоо очиж идэж уух ахаа завсрлаг аваад. And so and uh, I appreciate that so so many of you must have just came from your work, your office and Та нар я олонгчийн ажлынхаа газраас ирсэн биз тээ одоо ажиллаж ирсэн сурж ирсэн газруудаас ирсэн байгаа би маш их хүндэлж байна. So we we really enjoying our time and our fellowship with all of you here. Монголд энэ байна од байж байгаа да бас ингээд хамт нөхрөлж байгаа да бас үнэхээр баяртай байгаа. So we're looking forward for the next three evenings. Ирэхгүй урах гурав орой бол үнэхээр гайхалтай байх болно гэж найдаж байна. Now let me lay some foundations before we get into the scriptures. За бид нэр ихлэлүүд рүү орхон өмнөхөн нэг суурь зүйлсүүдийг харъя. Суурь 50 нь би. 
And uh, right after uh, Sunday morning, we were at the church office. Uh, and uh, that, that was really a wonderful time as we shared with uh, uh, the pastors, uh, the pastoral, and the whole leadership team. And uh, that was when I was beginning to to really get to feel the power of the church. <laughs> uh, beginning to hear the hearts of the pastors and the leaders and. Uh, the history, the present, and what they hope for in the future. And uh, that's when I started to feel the power of the church. Because because that was how God intended the church to be. That's why it is a living body. And Jesus is the head of the body. And so in the connection between the head and the body, it's a living being, it's a living organism. So as I travel in different parts of the world, the race is different, the language is different, uh, the, 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 the culture is different, uh, the climate is different. I just came back uh, with my second son from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka And you may know that Sri Lanka is, 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 is hot all year round. Sri Lanka is hot all year round. Sometimes when you're standing up there to preach, you feel as if you might as well wear shorts. <laughs> And a singlet to preach. Okay. So I don't know how to do short but I'll get to the mark So used to the heat and the, and the, and the humidity. It's amra. How long do you need to chill? And here's the opposite. Since you're in the short house, it's like it's like it. I have to come and get time. Uh, one piece <laughs> after the other. Be like bad such a thing. What's not a tie that and But in all of the different, uh, you know, variations and like as I said, and race and tongues and culture. Kerina, Tung Yanzing, Urur, Baitel, Baitel Tatras. But what is so wonderful is to see the church of Jesus Christ in different nations. Jesus Christ is human yag him olon төрөл одоо орчдог газруудад байгаад байгаа байхгүй юу? How this organic development mm -hmm. is so unique in every nation. Тэгээ тэр үндэстэн болгондоо нөгөө өөр байдлаас нь хамаараа тэр энэ органик бит чин өөрөө хөгжөөд байгааг би харж байна л да. So just just the last 2 3 days coming here watching and, and listening it tells me that there is another facet mm -hmm. of the life of the church that I've not seen before here. Тэгээ миний урд өмнө харж байгаагүй тэр талуудыг би одоо Монгол дээрээ дэн сүмийг харж байгаа та одоо олж харж байгаа хэрэг тэр биеийн өөр нэг хэсгүүдийг listening to pastor Sue's story and what happened in the last uh, Five, six, seven, eight years, it's, 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 it's like, wow. The only thing I don't just in Tawas name in Jilly Horn Bosson, Mongol Bosson, who dealt with the Sotara Sons Chartun here, Kaikata Veso. And so, how wonderful it is that the Lord has left for us His word. The Tirur Ugi beaten to Stitz never say him be. His unchanging word. The Russo Urch took the two Tirugan. Okay, it's on. Okay, now. Oh, okay. Now okay. it's on. Now on. <laughs> you, you mean to tell me it wasn't on all the time? <laughs> see, see, this is unique. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah, exactly. This, even this is organic now. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, both of us, we were, we were just sharing in the hotel. And, and our hearts, uh, 
are blessed, we're lifted to, to see the workings of the Lord here in this in this church. Amen. And uh, now I want to take you to this this next three evening. We're going to consider two particular psalms. All right. So I want you to turn to this two particular psalm. I'm so I'm so encouraged watching the tables in front of you. <laughs> so that means that you are, you're supposed to bring pens and notes and and write and. and that's, 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 a, that's a good thing. Yeah, I want you to turn to two particular psalms. All right, and. Uh, Psalm 23 and Psalm 24. Okay. Psalm 23 and Psalm 24. Now, in our Christian journey, these two Psalms uh, are famous. I suppose that most of you, when you came into the faith, Psalm 23 was, must be one of your favorite psalms. And, and, and of all of the psalms, Psalm 23 has been used perhaps more often than any other psalm. And this is not just with the church, but even with the secular, with the people of the world. Because there's something very uh, transcending, as we say in English, something very comforting and suiting when you read Psalm 23. It is commonly used and read and uh, memorized or even sung. Even yeah. Particularly in times of need and disappointment and pain and sorrow and affliction. So, in times of danger or threats and, uh, and, 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 and difficulties. And, uh, so, but what is so strange is that uh, we don't read enough of Psalm 24. <laughs> you know, 23 and 24 is, is just next to one another. <laughs> Have you noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> now, now that I'm looking at you and asking you about Psalm 24, you probably look at me. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, and Psalm 23, immediately you say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what is Psalm 24 and verse 1 and uh, 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 <laughs> now what I what I want to do is and this is what I believe I believe that both that Psalm in higher total Psalm 23 and 24 goes beyond just for the church for us to use it on a personal level. In higher doses, I'll tell you, some do it a bit new, so who can get who can get it? And for the next perhaps three evenings together, they hear it. Are they in Horong with a rainy toss at some more hamptata? And uh, you begin to see that I want to take these two psalms out of just. You know, the personal usage, the personal context. I want to do that. And Alright, I want to take it out of that context and 
begin to see it in a prophetical sense. With a, with a prophetical approach. And once something becomes prophetical, then we begin to touch the very spirit of Jesus Christ. Alright, because that's what the book of Revelation says. For the spirit of prophecy is the spirit of Jesus. Alright, when we touch something prophetical, then it begins to go beyond our human factors and our human needs. And this two psalm has always been read uh, in the in the in the whole premise of human needs. My, my you know my problem, my need, my, my, my struggle. But when you begin to see it from a prophetical sight, then it becomes something that is, that is from God's view, from God's standpoint. And so this is my our purpose together in this two sounds. And so, and in a way, it is also uh, a, a sense of what the future of the church is going to be. And uh, I believe that uh, there is a transition coming. All right. Shilchil. Now you know the word transition, isn't it? Shilchil. Transition is always the moving from uh, one place to another. Shilchil. And it's just like the children of Israel that has been in the wilderness for 40 years. So transitioning into the land of promise. It's a difficult thing. And all transitions are very painful. All transitions can be even chaotic and confusing. And uh, if the word transition is difficult, then the more simpler word is change. <laughs> change is difficult. Well, we all should know why change is difficult. <laughs> because when you are in one place, when you are in, uh, in a certain way of life, when you have a certain mindset, <laughs> a certain behavior, <laughs> and uh, a certain almost uh, mentality, change Change is difficult. So having to transit to another place, to another uh, nature is difficult. And all through the scriptures, God is a God that moves people uh, into changes, into transitional experience. And we will notice that those who make the transition successfully find themselves in a good place. And for those who cannot make the transition, 
uh, will suffer and even sometimes to a point of having to lose everything. Then I don't shield to teach at the world, but the old stuff to chat out to whom was yet to work. Mashik Zawson don't put there in the boat to put the hearts out to my heart. And you can see that all through the scriptures. And not people do remain to. All right. So the example is from the wilderness to the land of promise. Can you say you were here to do? Look at, look at how difficult it is. It took 40 years. The journey from uh, leaving Egypt into the land of promise was 14 days. But it took 40 years. So how difficult it is. And by the time when those who make it through the transition, a whole generation of those that first came out from Egypt will all perish. And for 40 years, the nation of Israel was moving in circles in the wilderness. And always remember that when we don't make transition, we will always find ourselves in circles. All right, circle is a terrible thing. All right, we call it cyclical. Our life becomes a cycle. We repeat the same old mistake. Our life become the same old pattern. And our problems come back again and again. We fight the same battle again and again. Never having the victory. Never gaining higher grounds. You see, that's how difficult it was. And so if you read the story, the account of the whole transition, that is so much that is applied to our to the church of our time and our life. And so I believe that there is a transition that is coming in the church of Jesus Christ everywhere. And in this case, I think the transition is from Psalm 23 to Psalm 24. You've got the point now? Very simple. All right. I think the transition is coming soon in the church from a Psalm 23 premise to a Psalm 24 premise. You see how now, now I'm taking you away from your favorite song. Alright, I'm taking you away from that lovely and comforting and the, the shepherd of Israel, you know, uh, and, and, and all the good things that comes with it. And we should. We should enjoy the blessing in Psalm 23. But I'm not talking now anymore about our personal need and our personal use of Psalm 23. So now... There's three simple English words that we all use. I, me, myself. I, me, myself. Alright, I, me, myself. So you will, you will have that in Mongolian language. Alright, do you know that the I, me, myself? In in Korogan you are three tanner mitko. Uh-huh. This is re- is used seventeen times in Psalm twenty three. Harung Gorok there aron tato tagar tukine. 
намайг би now in your in your translation it may be either more or less but in the english it's 17 times англи хэл дээр бол энэ 17 гардаг зөвхөн тана монгол хэлээр бичигдсэн библи дээр яг энэс илүү ч ихэж магадгүй бас багч хийж маа right the first one is of course the lord is my shepherd эцэн бол миний хончин гэдэг хэлж байгаа шүү дээ i shall no one би хоолч тодохгүй you see you see how okay i'm just giving you an example тана тишээ л өгөөд байгаа шүү за аа All right and uh, just just in the in the one psalm 23 is 17 times. Би зөвхөн ганц гэн боогийн дуулал татар 17 байна. Now I want you to understand that I am not turning psalm 23 into something negative. I'm not. Тэгэхээр би дуулал 23-ыгтэй айгуу тийм сөрөг үзэгдэл болох гэдэг юм юу гэсэн биш шүү. We need we need the Lord as our shepherd. Мэдээж эзэн миний хончин байх ёстой хэрэгтэй ч. All right, we need him as the shepherd of our lives. Бидний амьдралын хончин байх хэрэгтэй шүү дээ Иесус чинь. Because God is the shepherd of a nation. He was the shepherd of Israel. Тэгэхээр бурхан тэр өөрөө үндэсний хончин Израилийн хончин багхгүй юу? If he shepherds a nation, can he not shepherd even an individual? Хэрэв тэр бүтэн үндэсний хончилтгийн бол хувь хүн нэг бүрийн хончин чадахгүй гэж. So Psalms 23, Psalm 23 was written in the context of not just a person's experience. Тийм учраас дуулал 23 зөвхөн хувь хүнд л зориулсан юм бол биш. Because the psalmist in Psalm 23 is trying to remind the psalm as the the children of Israel that God is also the shepherd of a nation. Итолл 23 өөр Израилийн хөвгүүдэд бурхнаас одоо сануулаад байгаа зүйл нь ахгүй би үе танаа үндэсний ч хончин шүү дээ гэж. Because if he shepherds a nation, he wants to also shepherd your individual. Яг тэгэл тэр үндэсний хончилт юм чинь хувь хүнийг ч гэсэн хончилт гэсэн үг. Яг энэ санаа яваад байгаа. And so the Jewish believers and the Jewish worshipers all under stood that the, the god of the nation the god of israel is the god of the individual тийм учраас еврей итгэгч бүр одоо еврей одоо бурханд итгэдэг хүн болгон л мэднэ бурхан бол хой хүний ч хончин үндэсний ч хончин is the god of abraham one abraham is the abrahamin бурхан is the god of isaac 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 ч бурхан is the god of jacob яакин ч бурхан тэд нар мэдэх байхгүй нэг because and 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 this is where the problem with Israel is. Тэгээ Израилийн асуудал нь гарч ирж байгаа юм чинь. They forgot that. Энийг мартцаа. All right? They forgot it. They 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 finally separate, you know, my individual life with the God of the nations. Тэд нар нөгөө нэг энэ бурхан чи үндэсний бас намайг хончилдаг гэдгийг юу гин мартцсан бэ гэхээр үндэсний хончилдаг гэдгийг мартц But as far as God is concerned, there's no separation. Тэгэхээр энийг салгаж ирүүсээ болохгүй байхгүй та. Салгаж ирүүсээ болохгүй. Хэрэв үндэстэнд тэр санаа тавьдаг юм бол тэр үндэстэн дотор байгаа надад бас тэр санаа тавьдаг. Энэ хоёр бол сарш шүү. He sees he sees the individual bound up with the entire nation. Тэгэхээр хувь хүн чинь өөрөө үндэстэн дотор ороод холбогдсон шүү дээ. And that's why it was the prophet who understood this. Тэгэхээр Юуныг яг ойлгодог ишүү зүйлгч байгаа дээ. That's why the prophets were the one that always felt that that individual and the nation cannot be separated. А тийм учраас ишүү зүйлгч нар яг энийг ойлгодог байсан. Үндэстэн ба хой хүн хоёр чин хамтдаа бүр хүлэгдцэн юм байна. That's why Isaiah in Isaiah 6 when Isaiah was in the presence of Jehovah uh, Jehovah or Yahweh. Тийм учраас Исаия 6 дээр одоо тийм Исаия өөрөө төр Яхова бурхны оршгод төр байж байгаа. Remember Isaiah cried out he says I'm a man of unclean lips. Хашгардаг шээ би буцар уруултай болчихж байгаа гэж. Can you imagine this is Isaiah? Исаия штэ. Who is the prince of prophet? Тийм бүх ишүү зүйлэгч нарын одоо ханху and he's already a prophet by the time he was writing uh, chapter 6 of Isaiah. He was already a prophet living in a holy relationship. And in the presence of God, Isaiah began to tremble and began to discover that he was a man of unclean lips. Now, 
You may remember, you may know, of course, that the prophet's mouth is so important because this is where everything comes from. The, the, greatest, the greatest instrument of a prophet is his mouth. He's conscious about his mouth and always his mouth or what he says. And he discovered in the presence of the Lord that his mouth was unclean. And then immediately, this is what he said. He said, I live in the midst of an unclean people. So he found out that not only his lips was unclean, but the lips of the nation and the lips of the people were also unclean. And you see that he not only saw his lips, he saw the lips of the nation of Israel. He, he saw the lips of the multitude of God's children. They were equally unclean like his. And so when Isaiah began to repent, it was as if that it is not just his own personal repentance, but he carried the nation with him. And because of that, no wonder he has the right to speak to the nation. No wonder he has the authority to address the kings and the powers there in the palace. You got the point here today? See how important it is. And so we can't speak to, to the society of Mongolia. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't speak to our people. We can't speak to our nation. Or the countries that we all come from. And the reason why we can't it's because we don't have the authority. And when we don't have the authority, it's because this is missing. We, we separate God from in our own lives from the nation. Can you see that now? See how powerful this principle is. And, uh, and this is what I'm saying, or what I'm trying to say to you is that we need to read these two Psalms. Away from just our personal need. So now I love Psalm 23. I still read Psalm 23. And uh, I still need the Lord to be my shepherd. And once he's the shepherd, he begins to lead me as the Psalm says. To green pastures. <laughs> Uh, to quiet waters to the path of righteousness and all of the blessings and all of the experiences that Psalm 23 gives to us. Alright, now so that's wonderful. But but then suddenly Psalm 24 shows up. And uh, suddenly Psalm 24 sounds different. Psalm 24 looks very majestic. 
үнгээр та тийм сүрж авалтантай ада гарч ирж байгаа 24 Psalm 24 doesn't have I me myself. Тийм ямар ч би намайг би өөрөө гэсэн байхгүй. He got the point there. Psalm 24 doesn't have all of the personal experiences. Yeah, the green pastures. And uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, what do you call that? Uh, the, the green pastures and then the, the quiet waters. Sorry. All right, and the, the the valley of the shadow of death. And then uh, the rod and the staff of the discipline in our lives. <laughs> there is no crying to ask God to prepare me a table in the presence of my enemy. There's no, there's no shepherd's oil to anoint, you know, a broken and a wounded sheep. Now listen, we need that. All right, I want you to know that we need that. Don't wrong me. We need those personal experiences. We need the Psalm, the Jesus, the Christ of Psalm 23. But listen, very important, but I'm now talking about transition. I'm not talking about just our individual needs here. I'm talking as a people. We're talking as a church of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about God one day having to use the instrument of the church. To be a witness in the nations of the world. Because for that to happen, then the the saints of God, the, ch- the Christians of the churches today, needs to be prepared to be moved from a Psalm 23 to a Psalm 24 experience. Amen. And Psalm 24 can be frightening. Psalm 24 is 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 what we call long range, long vision. Psalm 24 is global. Psalm 24 is universal. That's why it begins by saying the, the, the earth is the Lord's. <laughs> The earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof. Can you imagine that? Uh, it's no longer just the shepherd of Israel. It's not just the shepherd of an individual. It's not just the kind and the gentle shepherd now of Israel. He's now the king of glory. And he's going to come through gates and through doors. And he's going to come through and he's going to do battle and he's going to do mighty things. You see, this, this is transitional. All right. So let me, let me kind of put this in the best way that I know how. Now, if I can use a psalm to describe our modern church, it's Psalm 23. Because everywhere I go, Christians are in trouble. 
Христийн тэтгэгч нар асуудалд оржээ. Christians have lots of problems. Маш их асуудалтай болсон байна. Проблем дүүрэн байна. Some of these churches that I go back, I've been going back for the last 5, 6, 7 years. Өнгөрсөн 5 6 жилийн турш одоо миний очдог байсан сүмүүдрүүгээ би очоод, буцаал очоод, буцаал байгаа шүү дээ. And for 5, 6, 7 years the problem is still the same problem. Ганцхан ингээд би ирж очоод байгаад ч нэг асуудал нэр айдлах байгаа л байдаг. Хоёрдгүй. And because their problems never go away. Асуудал нь бас явдаггүй юус. And the changes never comes to their life. Я амьдралд нь ерөөсөө өөрчлөлт гарахгүй байгааг би харж байна. So they very much remain in the whole setup of a Psalm 23. Тэд нар бүр ингээд дуулал 23-оор байшин бариа дотор нь ороод амьдрцсан байгаад байгаа хөөхгүй. So the cry is always the same. Энэ нэг хашгаран нь чадлахан. God, you are my shepherd. Та миний хоньшин. I need you to come to. Ирэх хэрэгтэй байна. I'm tired. I'm I'm lonely. I'm hurt. Lead me to green pasture. I'm hungry. And I'm thirsty. Lead me to streams of water. God, my, my mother-in-law don't understand me. My family has got so many problems. Oh, I go to office, so many people don't like me. There's so many problems in my office. Lead me to the path of righteousness. I'm, re- I'm receiving so many emails. All these emails, they are attacking me. God, I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm, I'm sorry for doing that, all right. What I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying is... Remember what I said on Sunday? Positive and negative? <laughs> so, Psalm 23 can become like that. And it has become like that by and large in the church. So, for most Christians, we are very much within the domain and the realm of the psalm here. That's why Psalm 23 is very church orientated. Church orientation. Can, will you agree to this? Some of you here, you use Psalm 23 to counsel many Christians. Isn't it? You put your hands here. The Lord is our shepherd, sister. When was the last time you counsel? The earth is the Lord, sister. <laughs> When was the last time you said, brother, the king of glory is coming through the gates? The, the, the Christian will probably look at you. I'm having so much of a problem. And the king of glory wants to come through the gate. I don't care. I don't care when the king is going to come and going to go. I've got problems, brother. Isn't it? You don't, you, don't, you don't talk to Christians who have got so much a problem. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, brother? You probably say, brother, I can't even talk to my mother-in-law. I want, how do I send the hill? Sometimes 
Who shall stand in the holy place? I don't got to hint of such a thing, be total tyrant. I'm trying to I'm trying to find time to stand before my wife. You asking me to stand before the presence of the Lord. So conveniently, Psalm 23 has almost become a kind of a, what do you say that a formula. It has become some kind of a, a system. Alright, it's it's almost a technique. Technique. And we have used Psalm 23, unfortunately. To our own advantage. Now we know that from God's side, this is not his intention. God in his nature, God in his existence, doesn't operate like that. That's not, that's not the facets of his nature. So, Psalm 23 is a very church psalm. It speaks so much today of the time and the seasons that the church is in. So if Psalm 23 is very church oriented, that Psalm 24 is kingdom oriented. Got it now? Alright, so I'm, I'm trying to put uh, this 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 is not the best description, but I'm trying to use this. In order to, to kind of prophetically be able to view this to some uh, for our benefit. And uh, and there's a difference between the church and the kingdom. Anymore, there is a difference between Psalm 23 and 24. It's not the same. Alright, you notice that the context is not the same. The form, the form is not the same. The content is not the same. The approach is not the same. And the very character of God seems to even review different things. Psalm 23 is... Psalm 23 is a gentle shepherd. Psalm 24 is a God who is at war. A gentle shepherd and then a God who is at war. What a, what a contrast. Hey, what, what, a, what a difference. But we need to see both. Now, one of the great problems of the church of our time, if there is any mistake, if there is any weakness in the church today, now, I said to you a while ago that I see the church in different nations of the world. Different countries, different race, different language, different culture, and uh, different climate. 
But it's strange that as I go to different nations, but the church is the same. The Mongolians who read Psalm 23 is the same Psalm that is read by Sri Lankan. It's read by the Indians. It's read by the Danish and the Swedish. The Malaysians and the Singaporeans. And it's the same, the same thing that I describe about. <laughs> so I'm taking the two Psalms and beginning to to take it out of just our personal context. And so, so the weakness and the problem of the church today is the failure to make the transition from a church to the kingdom. It's a failure to understand the difference between the church and the kingdom. It's, it's the inappropriateness of not having to understand the difference between the two, the Psalm, the God of Psalm 23 and the God of Psalm 24. And that's the reason today why the church is so immature. You can't live in Psalm 23 and, uh, and, 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 uh, and believe that you're going to mature. That's why there's so little of maturity in the church everywhere. Got the point there? You can't mature if you stay in Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is good. It's needful. We must have it. But Psalm 23 is only there to prepare you so that you can transit into Psalm 24. <laughs> but Psalm 23 has become a kind of a painkiller three times a day. You know, you, you, you know when you go to the doctor, they give you, they give you a packet at the, you know, they give you medication. All right. All right. Three times a day, okay? Mm. One week course. Three, Three times a day. Finish the course. So Psalm 23 has become some kind of a one week course. Three times a day. But only to find out after seven days. We have to visit. Visit Dr. Jesus again. Lord, it's me. You're my shepherd. <laughs> I shall know one. <laughs> then we start the prescription again. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, if you stay in that mode, there's no maturity. I'm not saying, I'm not talking about getting better. And this is, this is the tragedy. Listen, this is the tragedy of the church. We go to the scripture to want to get better. God is not here to make you better. He's here to kill you. Amen. He doesn't want to make you better. He wants to finish you. He wants to apply the cross of Jesus Christ into your life that you might die. That you might yield. That you might yield. That you might give up. That you might surrender. 
And throw yourself completely into his arms. You see that now? This, this, this is where we are today. So the, the universal church of Jesus Christ today is very much a Psalm 23 church. And, uh, but God is wanting a church to stand on the ground of Psalm 24. Hallelujah. He's the God of Psalm 23. But it is not enough. The church is wonderful. But always remember that God had a, had a plan for the church. The church is God's masterpiece on earth. Paul says that the church is the very purchase possession of God. God purchases it. And, and God purchased it with the blood of his own son. What can be more priceless than the blood of his own son? It's the highest value of all eternity. It's the most costly thing in the presence of God in all eternity. I believe that God has many other costly things. But, but the life of his son is the most costliest. And he has to use the most costliest thing in his being to purchase this thing called the church. And that's why you and I, who are the purchase possessions of God, we need to understand in the first place why did he purchase us? Why did he purchase us with the blood of his own son? So that we can become like this. We become so churchy. We stay in the church, we take up the Bible, and we use it like some kind of a painkiller seven days, three times a day. And you know, 40 years, 40 years ago, I remember when I first got saved, I went to a crisis as a young Christian because I was so dissatisfied, dissatisfied with myself. And I had my own personal problem. I was only 17 years old. You know, 17 years, you don't have women problem. You don't have money problem. All right? 17 years old, you don't have women problem, you don't have mother-in-law problem, you don't have... <laughs> I was still a student. But I have problems. But my problem was inside. My struggle was on the inside. Because I was just saved six months. And I began to read the Bible. And the more I read it, the more the problems on the inside increase. I can't share this problem with people. I, try, I tried. I went to my church people. I went to my elders. They are, they are, they are, they are 
I mean, they're so senior in the Lord. They have been with the Lord for a long, long time. And 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 six months. What can you say? What language can you use? You're so young. So and, and, and I had an experience on the inside that I don't have words to describe it. I have emotions running on the inside but I can't find a word to describe that emotion. And then and, and I try very hard to tell them. You see, but I didn't know that they, they, they came and put the arms around me. It's okay. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> they didn't use Psalm 23. But the way they talked to me was in the spirit and the mode of Psalm 23. You see, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I, I used to wonder why. Why, why can't they speak to me? I remember this brother came up and say, after hearing me, it's okay. One day you will go away. And go I said, uh -huh. go, go where? <laughs> you go away where? Go, go, go to what? Go where? What, what do you mean go away? <laughs> That's what, he that's what he told me. He said, it's okay, just, just, just stay there, just hang in there. One day we'll go away. It's, it's, like, it's as if like this thing on the inside of my heart, it would just crawl out my heart and then walk. And take a flight and go to Mongolia. It didn't go away. It didn't go away one year. It didn't go away two years. It didn't go away three years. It didn't go away four years. The crisis, the crisis of seeking the heart of the Lord lasted for four years. I talked, I asked, I, I, I approach any, everyone that I can think of. I, I, had, I laid my hands on every book I could find to find answers, spiritual books. Christian books. There was a crisis in my heart. And as young as I was then, I saw the church. I was part of the church. The church is part of my life. The church is bound up with me and I with the church. I knew then as a teenage boy I cannot be separated from the church any more than I can be separated from Jesus. But I knew then something was wrong in the church. I knew that the church has missed something. And I'm here to announce to you now 40 years later. I tell you what the church has missed. The church have missed the kingdom. The purchase possession of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ With the most costliest element, the costliest thing before the Father. God intended that the church that was so costly to him was actually, listen, was actually formed by God. 
бурханаар хэлбэрчих их хэвчтэй. Engineer by his genius. Түүний төр суу ухаанаар нь бүтээгдэх хэвчтэй. Listen to serve, listen to serve one end. To serve one end to one purpose. Нэг зорилгын төлөө үйлчлэх хэд. And the church is to understand and to serve the kingdom. Нэгэл зорилгад сүм үйлчлэх хэвчтэй. Тэр ямар зорилг ой гэхээр хаанчлад гэдэг тэр зорилгад үйлчлэх хэр дуудагцам. It's to be the very instrument of the kingdom. Let me put another word here you may not understand but listen to me is to be the very priesthood of the kingdom. We come to that when we have time. The church is to be the priesthood of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I want to close this session so that we can have a short break. Let me leave you with this thought. Very important. Do you know that Jesus never told us to build the church? The word church is only mentioned twice. From Jesus, Jesus' lips while he was on earth. One time in Matthew 16. One time as an inference in Matthew 18. But truly, in the matter of what the church is, Jesus only mentioned it once. And this was the conversation that Jesus had with Peter. Remember that? Yes. And Jesus finally said to Peter, he said, who do you say? The, everyone out there is saying what they say I am. I'm asking you, Peter, who am I? And Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father who is in heaven, upon this rock, what is that rock? The rock is the revelation of who Jesus is. Because Jesus cannot be known through human knowledge. Jesus cannot be learned through human intelligence. Jesus cannot be an education in our lives. You cannot learn him in the universities and schools. You cannot know Jesus by books. By any other means. Jesus can only be known by the revelation of the Father. Jesus said, upon this rock. Isn't it, isn't it interesting that he used the word rock? Isn't that wonderful? His rock. It takes the revelation of God to put rocks into our lives. That's why you can, you can be sitting in the church and yet don't have a rock. The rock is the revelation of who Jesus is. And right after that, Jesus said, I will build my church. So that should, that should also tell you, look at the sequence, look at the order here. Jesus can only build on the rock, upon the rock. A Christian cannot be built in Jesus until Jesus is a revelation first in him. 
эцгээс нь хүүг илчилсэн илчлэлт буюу хад орж ирэхээс нааш ямар ч сүм босогдохгүй л гэсэн. cannot be built. Чадахгүй байж. That individual men and women cannot be built. There's no building. You can't put anything on that man and that woman until Jesus is a revelation first. Тухайн эрэхтэй, тухайн эмхтэй хүнлүү эцэг хүүгээ илчлэхээс нааш та тэр хүнээс юу ч гаргаж чадахгүй та тэр хүн дээр юу ч барьж чадахгүй. That's why Psalm 23 can become a painkiller three times a day, seven days. Тэгэхээр дуулал намч өөрөө 7 хоногийн курс имчилгээ өдрийн гурав уудаг өвчин намдагч болчиход байгаа байхгүй. And why is that so? Ичлэгт байхгүй байгаа байгаад байгаа учраас. Why is that so? Яагаад яагаад байх? Because that individual cannot be built. Аха. Тухайн хүн ч нөө ичлэлт аваг учраас баригдах боломжгүй шүү дээ. The best you can do is to keep keep him in the rand of Psalm 23 and throw him Psalm 23. Тэгэхээр яах юм бэ? Баригдаагүй тэр хүнлүү та өвчин намдаагчл чихэн яагаад гэвэл тааш барьж чадахгүй юу ч би болгож чадахгүй. Jesus say upon this rock then he can build the church. Ихлэд хатан суур илчлэлт байна. Тэгээд би тэр дээр нь барина. It's a wonderful thing to see a man and a woman being built by God. Тэгэхээр бурхны гараар баригдаж байгаа эрэгтэй эмэгтэй хүмүүсийг харах шиг гоё юм байхгүй шүү дээ. Peace peace by peace. Уу яаж тэгж хэсэгт баг багаар баг багаар ингэж уралж байна тий. Layer by layer. Тий тавьж штт. Уу ингэж үрж. Rock upon rock. Ням байлан чулуун дээр тулж байгаа юм шиг тий ням байлан үрж байгаа харах. Hallelujah. No no. And when you look at that individual, ta inig yag tir hoy khun gitig utgara. He and she becomes more than a Mongolian. Tigher borkhan zukhun tani hanchim zukhun Mongolian hanchim tuti bish. More than a European. Zukhun tir Europe bish. More than an American. American bish. He's more than a Chinese. Yet tigh bish. He's more than an Indian. In tigh bish tuti bish. He's a new creation. Тэр одоо Христээс илчилт аваад хад мэт баригдаж байгаа нэгэн чин байна шүү дээ. Монгол хүн биш боор шин бүтэл. Hallelujah. Шин нэрэн шин бүтэл. And this is the hope of the glory that Paul talks about. Тийм л учраас Павл яриад байсан алдрын найдвар гэдэг ач нь энэ багад ох баригдаж байна шүү дээ. So Jesus makes it very clear. Тэгээ Есүс бол энийг айгүй тодорхой хэлцсэн. I will build the church. Би сүмэ барина. And when he gets to build it. Тэгээ тэр байрхад then the gates of hell will not prevail. Тамын хаалга түүнийг дийлэхгүй. Because the power of hell hates the building of the church. Тэгээ бол жас тамын хүчч нь өөрөө сүм баригдахыг үзэн яддаг байхгүй. Hates it. Үзэн ятгаас яах вэ? He hates it. Үнэхээр үзэн яддаг. He is he is deeply He's deeply in uh, what do you call that uh, he's deeply against it he's in opposition to the church Sumik te tam baish te zuel uzi yad dimish bur bur golosa za ya bur zurkhnes ya ta bur ukhn hatan uzi yad because the church that is built by Jesus spells an end to his power mm. and influence <laughs> Христ дээр өөрөөр нь баригдаж байгаа сүм бол тэр одоо тамын хүчийг зүгээр ингэж иргэж идэх So he will prevail. That's why he wants to prevail. Тэмэл учраас тийж байгаасаа гэж Есүс үсэж байгаа шүү. One of the ways in which he has prevailed in the church is this. Тэгэхээр дьяволын өөрөө сүмийг даваад ялаад исэн нэг шалтгаан байгаа юм. Is to make sure you and I built the church to the point that Jesus cannot build it. Есүс Христ барайгүй харин бид нар барьж байгаа гэж бодох юм бол сүмийг нэг юм бид нар харах хэвээр юм байна. Got the point now? Even the devil knows only Jesus can build the church. Ah, za 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 za. Бүр дьявол хүртэл сүмийг хүн барэчи. Зөвхөн Христ барьдаг гэдэг мэт. And he can't stop Jesus from building the church. А тэгээд байж тэ. Дьявол яагаад энэ сүмийг ингэж хүний барьсан сүмийг нураагаад байдаг вэ гэхээр энэ нь айгүй нурчих болон айгүй нурчихсан баггүй. Харин Христ бариул тэр нураа чадахгүй гэдэг мэт байна. So the only way to interfere Jesus building Jesus building program. Тэгэхээр Есүсийн өөрийнх нь барьж байгаа барилгын төслийг нураах юм тулд. Is to get the people in the church men like you and I to get busy to help Jesus build the church. Есүсийг сүмэ барихтан тусалж болох тэр эргэтэй эмгтэй хүмүүсийг нь завгүй байлах. Because once we start to build the church. Хэр бид нар сүмийг барьж эхэлэх юм бол then Jesus don't have don't have a chance to build it. Есүс оролцох боломжгүй болчихж байгаа хүн барьдаг гэхэлгэр сүмийг чинь 
He doesn't have the place to build the church. Тэнд зогсоод зүмиг барих зай тэнд алгуулж байгаа. Есүс ч шүү зай. And that has been the story of the church in the last 2000 years. 2000 жилийн төрш бол үнэндээ бол яг л ийм л түүх бичигдсэн байгаа. Хүн л баярэд байсан. Got the point there? Ойлгож байна. It's very simple. It's, do you see this now? Одоо та нарт нэг зураг харагдаж байгаа зүйл ярих биш. Jesus say I will build the church. Би сүмэ барина гэдэг нөгөө Христ хэлжээд байгаа шүү дээ. Now but every day here as we sit together who do we see who do we see the most? Тэ бид нар энд бүг орой болгоод амтаа цуглаж байгаа хэнийг бид нар илүү хардаг вэ? Let's be honest. I, I don't get to see Jesus every day. Би өдөр болгоо Есүсийг хараад байдгүй. I walk with him. Тэ бид үнд алхдаг нь үнэн. I spend time to develop my relationship with Jesus. Есүс Христтэй илүү гүн харилцдаг болохын тулд түүнтэй цаг өнгөрөөд. But at times I don't see him. Харин нэг тэгэл ингээл хаасаагүй хараад байдаг юм биш. The times I don't feel him. Тэгээ дандаа мэдрэл ингээд. But in the church. Харин сүм дотор. I see you every day. Таныг бол өдөр болгоо хардаг. I feel you every day. Таныг бол байнга мэдрэж таны оршихуу гол бол одоо хүнийх нь. I feel you so much I want to run away. Тэгэл бүр одоо бүр заримдаа төвгшөө гэж зухтан таныас айгүй бол бол одоо тэ за дайрэч ятгаатай юм тий. I because that's that's the nature of the church. Эн сүмэ өөрөх нь мөн чанар. How can not be in the church before we begin to think that we can do something in the church? Бид нар байна штэ. Сүм дотор ямар нэгэн зүйлийг хийж чадна гэж бодохгүй байгаа юу гэсэн байма? Би толгой хэрэгцээ. Say again. I'm confused. Meaning that we're in the church for so long. Okay. That we in the end as Christian we tend to put our hands and say lord we're going to help you build the church за 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 сүм дотор бид дэндүү удаан одоо явсан учраас сүм дотор дэндүү удаан суусан учраас бид нар сүлдээ бүр ийм болцсон эзэн мэнэ би танд сүмий чинь барихад уснаад үгүй so that has been my struggle тэд яг миний зүрчил бол яг энэ хандлагаас гарч ирж байгаа юм i say lord i know what you said за эзэн мэнэ би таны юу хэлснийг мэдлээ you built the church та сүмэ барих юм байна You never said that we are to help you. Та хийцээч бид нар тань тусал бид нар таны сүмийг барьж өгч гийгүүлх юм байна гэж та хэлээгүү. But Lord, we are part of the church. А та бид нар сүмийн их хэсэг. We so human together. Бид нар хамтдаа хүмүүс. We are a people so full of problems. Бид нар дүн зөндөө яг асуудалтай хүмүүсийн нэгдэл. So Lord, help me to understand. Тэгэхээр надад ойлгоход минь тусал. When you say that you will build a church. Та сүмэ барин гэж хэлэхдээ. And that the gates of hell will not prevail. Тэр сүмийг нь тамын аалга дийлэхгүй гэж хэлэхдээ. But I said I have been seeing the gates of hell prevailing everywhere. Хэлсэн шүү дээ. Гэсэн чинь би сүм дотор сууж явах та одоо 17 настай хүү. Харсан чинь тамын хаалга зүгээр итгэж нарын өмд илгээстэй тэг өөд амьдрлыг нь идэстэй. The church in Mongolia started in 1990. Мянган зүг ирэн оноос хойш сүмүүд нээлттэй болж ирсэн Монголд. It didn't take long for the devil to come to Mongolia and the church in Mongolia and prevail. Тэ бүр одоо дьяволд энд ирээд бүр сүмийг нь эзлэхэд хүртэл хоромхон хугацаа байгаа шүү. It prevails. Гэтэл аль хизээний тэр энэ хийцэн байгаа байхгүй юу? It could still be prevailing now. Аль хизээний монголын сүм чуулгануудыг тэр асуудалд унгаач чадсан байгаа юм. Давамгайлч чадсан байгаа юм. So I asked the Lord. Тэгэхээр эзнээс би асуусан. God, you can't make me understand this. Та надад ойлгуулаач. Та ингэж хэлсэн байтал бодит байдал өөр байна. Then what am I supposed to do? Тэгээд би яах юм бэ? Yet you call people like us to serve you. Тэгээд та өөр над шиг хүмүүсийг дуудаад л үйлчлэх гээд те. Serve you and yet not help you build the church. Тэгээд би танд үйлчлэх гээд чинь би таны сүмийг барьж чадахгүй тийм үү? What are we supposed to do? Тэгээд одоо барихгүй бол би юу хийх вэ? You understand what I'm saying? Зөрчил нь яг энэ байсан баг. Do you see the conflict here? А энэ зөрчлийг та нар харж байна уу те? So what? What what is it I'm supposed to do? Тэгээд одоо би яах яах хэвээр юм бэ? Do I have to touch everything and say, Lord You doing or I'm doing? Тэгэл хийж байгаа юм бол гонаа барайл одоо би хийгээд байна уу та хийгээд байна уу? On Sunday morning when we stand up here and preach, Lord, you preaching or me preaching? Тэгэл бүтэн сайдэр өглөө энд гарч ирчихэд эзэн мэн та намлахгүй би намлахгүй. Do you understand all those very simple and practical questions? Өндөр болгол бид нар юм асуултуудтай тулгардаг шүү дээ. Make me understand this. Тийм учраас би хийсэн ойлголтой би гэж. And one day, тэнийг өдөр it came мэдээж хариулт ирсэн. The answer came. Мэдээж хариулт ирсэн. The answer came. Хариулт ирсэн байна. 
I spent so long, I spent so much time in Psalm 23. I forgot that after 23 is 24. <laughs> That's not a revelation, that's just mathematics. <laughs> I, I, I've been staying in Psalm 23 for so long, I forgot about Psalm 23. <laughs> and then suddenly the Lord took me back to something so simple. I read it all my life. <laughs> I read it all my life. And yet never understood it. Now I'm, I'm going to share you a simple, I'm going to ask you a simple question. Did you know that the church is only mentioned once or twice in Jesus' lips? I'm going to if you know that the word kingdom is mentioned almost <laughs> Yes or no? Yes. When Jesus talked about the gospel, he didn't call it the gospel of the church. He called it the gospel of the kingdom. When Jesus used the parables, many wonderful parables, he didn't call it the parables of the church. He called it the parables of the kingdom. You hear? When Jesus said the sons, he didn't call the sons of the church. They call it the sons of the kingdom. When Jesus said that uh, there are mysteries that are reserved for the humble and for the childlike uh, and for all those that are weak who don't think that they are clever. Didn't say it's the mysteries of the church. It's the mysteries of the kingdom. And then one day, suddenly the light started to dawn on me. Because I've been in a church for so long. I was frustrated in the church. You understand what I'm saying? I want to run away from the church. I didn't want to run away from God. I didn't want to run away from the ministry. I want to run away from the church, Aha. from people like you all. Because Christians in the church was addicted to Psalm 23. They're addicted. Every time they come to church, they have a rubber band. They tie their arm and they shoot somebody free. Some doctor or teacher has to push off his socks. Tear his shirt off. Tear his hair. No, you're not going to get it. Socks tear his hair. Some of them they put it on the spool and then they have a lighter on and then the clock up and they chase somebody free. I'm tired. I say, God, I'm building the church. I'm helping you to build the church, but look at the problem in the church. And yet you say that you are building the church. I said, God, where are you? God, where are you? Where are you? The church that is your possession. But, but God, where are you? And then it, it came to me one day. It hit me like a truck like a beautiful truck. It hit me like a like a beautiful, uh, like a sweet, soft, like in the morning sun that rises on the horizon. 
the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And then it dawned on me. Finally, the light came. If I don't build the church, and I cannot help you to build the church, the church is for you to build, Lord. What should we do? We're supposed to seek his kingdom first. Hallelujah. And then it came to me. As if the Lord would say to my heart, to the measure that you will seek the kingdom, to the same measure, I can build the church. Got the point to the measure that the church will seek the kingdom. That measure. Jesus said, then I can build the church. Yes, I will build the church. But I can only build when you are seeking the kingdom. When the church is seeking the kingdom. When my when my when my people is seeking the kingdom. When my pastors and leaders is seeking the kingdom. When our fathers and mothers are seeking the kingdom. And in the in the reality of the seeking of the kingdom will be the reality of Jesus building the church. And that set me free. Hallelujah. I suddenly found the answer. I suddenly found I can now make the cross over from Psalm 23 to Psalm 24. <laughs> Hallelujah. Could, do you see the point here? Amen. This is where the church is in, in the nations of the world. And God has to bring to the church this awareness. And this has sent me across the nations in these past many years. And I, and I stand here to rejoice with you. I've saw. I've seen men now that have crossed from Psalm 23 to Psalm 24. It has set them free. And because it set, because it set them free, it set their families free, their marriages free, and the church free. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow, all of you, you have your eyes all open up. No one is dozing up. <laughs> After such a busy Monday, Monday working day. Praise the Lord. Let's stand as we have a break, shall we? Thank you. Pastor Sue is going to pray for us as we have a break.
тэнд баярлаа аваа. Тэгээд маш одоо оюун санаа маш их сонох хэрэгтэй байна, тэлэг хэрэгтэй байна аваа. Тэгээд яг үнэ өнөөдөр үнэхээр бид нар энэ хотын сүм одоо бусад сүмүүдийг дагуулах, тэр шилжилтийг амжилттай хийхэд нь газарчлах, бурхны гац ирсгэн болох, таны шилжилтийг амжилттай хийх, хаанчлыг одоо харуулах, эрэн хайх одоо мэдгүй бүхий зүйс чинь энд бийлээ олох хэвээр. Энэ хаанчлын нууцууд илчлэгдэх ёстой аваа. Танд баярлалаа хэцэн минь. Үргэлжлүүлэн бид нь лөө яриар. Таны өгсүүд яг энэ цагт бидний зүрхэнд айгүй гүн суугдах хэвээр. Тэр үр гүн суугдах хэвээр. Ил тийм одоо өнгөц биш маш гүн суугдах хэвээр. Ариун сүнс та энэ ажлаа гайхалтайгаар хийнэ гэдэг итгэж байна. Би Есүсийн нэрээр ярьж байна. Амин. Амин. За цөмөр Юу яа 20 минут засралч чи тэгэхөө 20 минут хангалттай шүү дээ тий та нар Окей. За ахли дөөт. All right. So let's uh, we'll bring this to what to 9:00. 9:00. Okay. All right. Now uh, after the after the church on Sunday in the office I was discussing this book with uh, the the whole pastoral team that the leadership team Тэгээ бүтэн сайдэр бид нэр офис тахта энэ номныхаа тухай би өдрлөгийн багтаа ярьж байна. I'll leave I'll leave it to pass to talk about it uh, when I'm gone or whatever. Тэгээ энэ одоо энэ ном өөрө бүхлээрээ одоо намаа миний юу туусан бүгдийгэр нь бичсэн байгаа. And uh, some of what some of the things in which I shared энэ та нартаа хуваалцж байгаа зүйлсийн зарим нь and uh, the the years of having to seek and having uh, to struggle to understand the mind of the Lord. Эзний оюун ухааныг одоо нэг олчих юмсан гэж эрэлхийлэн хайгуулж ирсэн тэр он жилүүд юм аа одоо олж байгаа байхгүй. And uh, many many days of darkness, many days of confusion. Маш олон өдрөөр шөнөөр одоо төөрөлдсөн, хайсан, одоо самуурсан те бодлсон юм уу? Many days of hardship. Many days of hardship. Маш хүнд зүйсүүдийг туулж ирсэн өдрүүдийн тухай. Is the result is is finally the result of having to bring out this book. За тэгэхээр тэдгээр өдрүүд юм аа үр дүнд жирэмсэлж энэ ном төрсөн байгаа даа. This has to do with the very realities of the kingdom. Тэгэхээр энэ ном нь өөр хаанчлын жинхэн чанар, хаанчлын жинхэн бодит байдлын тухай үгүйсэн. Now this is in English. Англиар мэдээж бичих. I'm speaking to to all of you that uh, are Mongolian. Та нэг монголчууд та нарт одоо би ярьж байна штэ. You know, I, was, I was just sitting in the chair. And this Bible belongs to our sister, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I noticed that, you know, I, I don't read Russian, I don't read Mongolian. Right? But I can see 23 and 24, the number 23 is And I noticed Psalm 23 is all underlying and marked. За тэгээ нөө тоёг энэ ном нь болохоор ингээ бүр дуул ингээ битүү зурцсан байна гинэ 23 нэг адрасаа. The swam 24 is completely empty. 23 нэ амар ажиллагаатай 24 нь хаасан байдаг. It's not one single line under the No, no fault of yours. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same like me. Yeah, <laughs> everybody is covering some 24 now. Yeah, when you were I was just telling, I was just telling my son. Look, look at some 23. It's all underlined. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's where we are. It's not just individually. It's universal. Right. Now, so this is this. I've shared this with Pastor Sud. And I've given permission to her that if she read this book. And if she feels and fine and and that this is so important. I encourage her, I say, you have my permission to translate this. Alright. And uh, 
fault. <laughs> okay. You don't have to give me the money. I don't want the money. You, you, you translate this and, 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 and be a part of what the Lord is going to do in this part of the war. All right, and uh, so they are precious things, precious gem from this book. All right, so it will be a joy for me to hear one day that this is uh, in Mongolian or in Russian language. Yeah. All right. now, let's, let's return, let's, let's for a short time, let's come back to the world. Wow. Praise God. And uh, now I know that this this has come to you in a very fresh way. And even, even my dear pastor here said, oh, I've never seen this before. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take time to build on it. Now, see, for a long time within the tradition of the church, we have the false impression, we have false understanding that the church is the kingdom. Now, so I'm here now to share with you, I'm here to tell you, Jesus never meant the church to be the kingdom. The church is not the kingdom. All right? It's very simple as that the church is not the kingdom. But yet the church and the kingdom is inseparable. You cannot separate. And that's why you can't separate Psalm 23 and Psalm 24. You see that now? Because in experience or experientially, Psalm 23 is equally important as in Psalm 24. Psalm 23 is the shepherd. Psalm 24, he's the king. You, you, you cannot have a shepherd without the king. Because the shepherd is the king. He's a shepherd king. <laughs> but but in, in, our, in our human state, in our human uh, weakness and frailty, and in the slowness of our understanding, we, we, we have preference. We choose one more than the other. <laughs> we like one more than the other. <laughs> Isn't it? That, that, that's why all of our Psalm 23 is all underlying. And we don't underline 24. <laughs> See that now? Because we like Psalm 23. Because by the time we write, we read Psalm 24. Yes. <laughs> and you just move on. It doesn't. It doesn't capture you. It doesn't. It doesn't arrest you. You're just a tiny character. You get to go. Go. You're just a bird. You're just a bird. You move. Go. 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 For ourselves. See that? We use the scripture for ourselves. Some of us, we don't even know we use God for ourselves. We use, we use the Holy Spirit for ourselves. See that? So, now listen, now, now of course we always used to say that no, no, we, we, we use other things for ourselves. We use cigarettes or we use drugs or we use money for ourselves. That's all bad. But we can also use God for ourselves. 
We can also use scriptures for ourselves. So both is selfish. Using money for yourself, that's selfish. Using God for yourself is also selfish. But between God and money, which one is easy to discover? Which one is far more easy to discover? Oh, that person is using money. It's so easy to discover. But when we use God, when we use the scripture, that's when it becomes hard. Because everything is about God. You understand that now? It is God because I, Lord, I, I want this. God, it's, 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 I, I know that you will do this for me. But we use God. We use Him for our end. And this is what has happened today in the church. So, we need to understand now. We need to see the differentiation. When Jesus brought the church and the kingdom together, All right. he meant that the church was to serve his purpose. The church was to serve God's end. So the church is actually God's means. Alright? It's just God's means. But the end is the kingdom. So the church is God's means to the kingdom. The church is not supposed to be to look like the kingdom. We are not supposed to be. Now, all through history of the church, men have done that. We've tried to make the church the kingdom. That's why many, many years ago, there's a tragic history known as the Crusades. Crusades from Europe. That's the church in Europe. Not just, not just one church. The entire church of Europe. The, the church in Italy. The church in Spain. The church in Portugal. Portugal. The church in Germany. And finally the church in England. So they all got together. And they want to go to the Holy Land. To Jerusalem. And what happened at that time in Jerusalem? Muslims, Muslims or Islam has taken over Jerusalem. And the churches in Europe says he said that's God's kingdom so we're supposed to go fight those Muslims uh, destroy them and then evict them out of Jerusalem and then bring the kingdom of God so did they do it? They went and do it. The bloodshed. And everyone was going there because they want to build the kingdom. 
Millions were slaughtered. Muslims and Jews and even Christians. Christians and the scar of what happened have lingered to today. That's why the entire, the entire Muslim world look at the Christian today and never forgot the crusade. And it came from there. Because the church of Jesus Christ think that they can bring the kingdom down. Do you understand that? Now this is just one example. I can bring you other examples in the last 2,000 years. When the church begins to think that they are the kingdom. That we are responsible to bring the kingdom. On this earth. We can't because we don't understand the difference between the church and the kingdom. And so when Jesus said, I will build the church, there was one purpose in his mind. The church is going to be his instrument. The church is going to be his vessel. The church is going to be his means. Very important. So that it will what? So that he will realize the kingdom. That's why one of the first things that Jesus said about the kingdom. He said, don't look left, don't look right, don't look here, don't look there, for the kingdom of God is what? Is within, within you. Now, when Jesus said that, he said it to the Jews. Alright, because all his apostles were Jewish. And as a Jew, they have been told in the Old Testament that one day that God is going to rule his creation. Every Jew knows that. All right, they all know that one day God is going to come down on this earth. Because the Jews all know that God created the earth. So if God created the earth, so if God created the earth, so what happens? If God is the creator of the earth, what? God should rule the earth. But, but look at the world today. Look at the earth today. God is not ruling. Got it? God, God is not ruling. Men is ruling. The governments of the world is ruling the earth. So Jews will know that one day God is going to return to rule the entire earth. That's why you must understand that Jewish sentiment, Jewish heart is this, that the Messiah is to come to rule the earth. So when the Messiah comes, 
then the rule of god will be established in the earth aha тэгсэн чин заяо тэр аврагч энэ газар дэлхийн дээр бууж ирэхэд бурхан газар дэлхийг захирна гэж тэд нар мэдээд байсан байна штэ do you know why they, re- re- they rejected jesus as the messiah тэд нар яагаад есүсийг чи бол мессая биш штэ гэд алсан бэ гэж 2000 years ago 2000 жил юм штэ on that day aha тэд тэр өдөр яагаад they rejected him түүнийг голцсон штэ 2000 years later 2000 жилийн дараа they still reject him одоо ч мөн түүний биш гэж байгаа because if he's the messiah хэрэв тэр мессая мөнл юм бол аврагч мөнл юм бол why is he not ruling the world яга захирахгүй энэ тэдний асуудал байгаа байхгүй яга захирахгүй why is this rulership хаана энэ тэр одоо захирна засаглах хэрэг нь got the point now ойлгож байна look the romans is still around at that time when jesus came the romans is still around тэр хэдэр ирсэн байх чинь тэр чи тийм мессая юм бол бид нар яхаараа роминг дарал дар байгаа даа julius caesar in rome is still ruling palestine julius caesar одоо тэр палестины нутгийг захирсан хэвээр л байна штэ that's why they call jesus a false prophet a false messiah тийм учраас тэр иесус их хуурамч шиш үзүүлэгч чи бол өөрийгөө аврагч гэж хуурамчаар нэрлсэн So what the Jews didn't understand was this. Тэгэхээр тэдний буруу ойлгож чадаагүй юм нь юу вэ гэхээр Jesus wanted them to know. Jesus тэдэнд нэг юм мэдүүлэх үсэд штэ. I will come back to rule one day. Би нэг өдөр иргэж ирээ засгална. That's why Jesus is going to come again. Тэгээ хоёр дахь ирэх чи дээр штэ. That's why there is a first coming and a second coming of Jesus Christ. Тийм ээ. Анхны ирэлт гэж байна. Христийн хоёр дахь ирэлт гэж байна. And to that which the Jews is expecting Jesus said I will return one day and I will rule the nations. Тэр нэг тэр еврейчүүдийн тэр ирээд одоо ингээл бүхнийг захирна гэдэг байгаа чинь түүний хоёр дахь ирэлт байхгүй тийе Есүс тийм би ир нь хоёр дахь удаагаа тэгээд би захирна гэж хэлсэн. But in my first coming Харин би ихний удаа ирэхтэй. I'm going to establish my rule. Аха би өөрийнхөө засаглалыг одоо ингээл тогтоох юм байгаа нь. I'm going to establish my kingdom. Хаанчлаа тогтоох юм байгаа анхны одоо ирэлт дээр. And it begins Listen, it begins. Аха. Энэ нь яаж эхлэх вэ гэхээр in your heart. Зүрхэнд ч нь эхлэх юм а гэж. Зүрхэнд ч хаанч байх. It begins in your personality. Чиний дотор одоо дотроос ч нь дотор хүнээс ч нь. You got it now? Ойлгож байна. Эхэлнэл гэсэн баг аахгүй. That's when Jesus said don't look left don't look right don't look here don't look there the kingdom is within you. Тийм л учраас Есүс тэ 400 400 найман захистаа хаанчлаг бити хайд ирчин чиний дотор байна гэж. And in spite of hearing what Jesus said. Тэ Есүс Христийн энэ хэлж байгаа үг нь they still don't want to accept. Үгийн нь хүртэл тэр хүлээж авах үсгүй байсан. In fact they got even more angry. Бүр харин ч уурсан бүр уурсан хилгэнсэн. And finally they were the one that crucified Jesus. Тэгээ эцсийн бүлэгт тэд нар ч нөө өөртөө цовлаалцсан шүү. Now the Romans crucified Jesus but they were the one that gave Jesus up to the Romans. Яг Ром Ромын цэргүүд цаацсан л да. Гэхдээ тэд нар Ромчуудыг хүчилсэн баггүй юу? They the, they were the one that insisted that Pontius Pilate crucify him. Понтий Пилатыг бүр хүчилсэн. Алаад өөр ал гэл Now, why is it that after knowing what Jesus said, why do you think that they still rejected Jesus? Яагаад те улаан цан хэлсэн юм нь газар дэлхийн дээр ирж байгаа тэд нар ингэж эсэргүүцэн хэвээр байсан юм. Яагаад тэд нар христиан? And they gave the impression as if that they really want the kingdom of God to come upon the earth. Тэ тэд нар өөрөө христиан ингэж одоо голоо зогсохгүй бүр их бурхны хаанчлын ирээсээ ирэх болно энэ төр гэж бүр амар хүсэж байгаа мэтээр царай гаргадаг. And when Jesus actually told them how this kingdom is going to come about when they found out they don't like it. Тэд нар хүсэдээсэн тэр хаанчл нь хурж ирэхэд яаж ирэх юм бэ? Яа тэр тэд нар угаасаа Есүсийн яриад байгаа тэр хаанчл нь тэдэнд таалагдахгүй байгаа байхгүй. Би таалагдахгүй байхад яаж ирэх юм бэ гэж хэлсэн байхгүй Есүс. Do you know why they don't like it? Яа тэр хаанч Есүсийн яриад байгаа тэр хаанчлыг тэд нар сонсохдоо дургуй байсан бэ гэхээр. Because Jews like all of us here today Яг тэгэл яг л бид нар шиг л те еврейчүүд өнөөдөр. We don't want God to reign in our lives. Бид нар ш бид нар шиг бурхан бидний амьдралд бүрэн захираасаа гэж хүсдэггүй. We don't want God to touch our personality. Яг ингээд би гэдэг хувь хүнд маань бурхан ингээд хүрээсэ гэж хүсдэг. We don't want God to touch our inner man. Дотор хүнд маань тэр хүрхийг бид нар дургуулдаг. We don't want God to touch our behaviors. Бидний биеэ яаж авч явдаг тэр байдлыг маань бурхан оролдох. We don't want God to show to us who we are. Бид нар хим болохыг маань тэр илчлэхэд дургу. 
Because that's exactly what the kingdom will do when it gets into you. And we don't, we don't want that. Because that's what sin has made us all to be. Sin has made all of us to be self-rulers. Yeah. That's why today the essential nature of sin is self-rule. Өнөөдөр гимийн ерөөсөө хамгийн гол зүм мөн чанарны үе гэхэд хүн өөрөө өөрөгөө захирах дуртай. That's why the war is in so much of a mess. Өөртөө эзэн байх. Because Энэс болоо дэлхийн өөрөө зовж байгаа. Because of self rule. Өөрөө өөртөө эзэн байна би. Yes or no? Тийм биз дээ. Because I want to be in charge. Self rule means I want to be in charge. Яг л тийш. Би өөрөө өөртөө эзэн байна. Оо хин надад тэлтэй. Нохоо хин саадын гэдэг чиг энэ. Ever since you became a Christian, have you found out that? Танар христиан болонгуудад энийг олж хараа идтэй. We still want to in charge once in a while. Өнөөдөр ч гэсэн дээр л хорхой гоцол цаг. We still know we still know better. Одоо ч гэсэн дээр бид Yeah, we're still clever. We, we, we can still make it without God. We're all right. Yeah. There's still things running on the inside of our lives. But you understand this now? See how important that was? You know, I, I, I always use this illustration here. This, if this is the church. Alright? So this is, Jesus said, I will build the church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. And we who is on this side, we will seek his kingdom. First, My experience tells me that when we don't seek the kingdom first, we usually, most of the time, we perform what is known as trespassing. Okay, we're supposed to seek the kingdom here. But when we don't seek the kingdom, and what does the kingdom do to you? It, it makes inroad into you. <coughs> That's why Psalm 24 is frightening. <laughs> Open you gates. <laughs> Open you doors. Do you know all of us has got doors and gates on the inside? Do you know that there are things in our lives that we hide? Sometimes we even know what those gates are. You know, gates and uh, gates and door, they always have locks. So they have keys. So some of, we don't even know sometimes, you know, we, some of us, we can still hold the keys in our hands. Some of us, we've lost the key. We don't even know. We don't even know what is our... What is, what is our doors and our gates? And Psalm 24 says the king is going to come in. He wants to come through the door. He wants to come through the gates. Because if he passed through the doors and the gates, he's going to find out what's in the house. Remember John chapter 14 and verse 2? There you are. Tom house, Tom So we don't want God to dwell with us. It's painful. Because the king is going to open doors and gates. There are, there are areas of our personality that, that no one knows. Alright, they're all locked up, they're all sealed up. 
And what we don't want it to be opened. And that's why we don't seek the kingdom. And that's why we don't invite the king to go further into our lives. So this is what happens. Once we don't do that, then this is what we do. Then we do illegal crossover. How many of you know that here is easy? God has, God has given me a vision. God has anointed me. I'm gifted. I'm talented. You you take up the guitar and you strum the song. And those and the women in the band. You strum the guitar, you got a lovely voice, you're talented with the guitar. You see that? And so the people and the people like you. Oh, brother, you anointed presence of God is on you. You know, we start to be like the horse and the and the tail go. <laughs> See, it's so easy here. It's easy here. We get away here. See the talents. I'm gifted. That's why it's, it's safer here. Come on, some of us here. For, for so many years in the church. Some of the most painful things that I've discovered, some of the most wrong things are done in the church. You know, I had a, I had a brother, I had a pastor in the church. He was a pastor of a church. And uh, there were some issues. And he and 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 this whole thing blew up, and it became very ugly. And he appealed to the church. He appealed to the people. He said, "Judge me. If I'm wrong, judge me." I'm willing to step down. I'm willing to to take whatever decision you want of me. You want me to leave? I'll leave. He, he wept and he cried. He asked for forgiveness from God's people. Oh. But there were some people in the church that were not happy. That's, this is not enough. Yeah, yeah, we know, we, know, we know what you do, but that's not enough. He said, we're going to take you to a civil court. You know civil court? Civil court means like the, law, the, the laws of the, of the land. And when he, went, when he went to the civil court, the judge listened to the case. And this is what the judge said. He said, why is this case presented to me? This is a church matter. He told these men, gentlemen, take this matter and go back to the church and you judge accordingly to your judge, to your, to your, to your, uh, to your people. No, it had to be not here. I have a thousand dollars. I have a thousand dollars. This is, this is a secular church. Just in case you don't know, it's a Muslim church. It's a Muslim church. It's a Muslim church. It's a Muslim church. Yeah. And, he's, and they brought the case to a Muslim church. And he had the sense as a civil judge to know that this matter should be judged by the church. And he and, and he and he looked at the pastor. He said, 
This is not fair the way they treat you. He's telling the pastor. He said this is not fair. But where I'm sitting. I can't judge you. Because there are civil laws that don't apply to the church. So you look at all these men. Will you take your pastor and go back and settle this peacefully? And the pastor stood up. He started crying. He told the judge. Don't send me back to the church. He, he told the Muslim judge, judge me now. He said, he said my, your honor, judge me now. In his chair, judge me now. Use the law of the country, judge me. And I tell you, when I heard the story, I broke down and I wept. And this is what the brother said. Years later. Years later. He said, how is it that I am in the church? That I would prefer to be judged by the civil court, by the laws of the land, than by the laws of the church. Hmm. Which law has more love and more mercy? The laws of God has mercy. And yet they will not give him mercy. This is the law of the land that can be very cruel. They can be very harsh. Yeah? They can be very hard. And he stood up. He said, don't send me back to the church. So what he's saying is, the law in the church is worse than your law here. Judge me now. And this is a story today. Of what has happened today. When we cross over. When we no longer seek the kingdom. When we no longer know, have knowledge of the kingdom. When we don't no longer live in the dimensions and the dynamics of the kingdom. When our lives are not ruled and controlled by the principles and the powers of the kingdom. Paul says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. His righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom. Because when the kingdom begins to operate, it raises the level of righteousness. It raises the level of righteousness in our behavior. It affects our behavior. It affects our words. It affects our emotions. When righteousness begins to increase, peace will come to us. And when peace comes to us, joy will follow. We don't seek the kingdom here. We're, we're so afraid what's inside of us. So many of us has kind of conveniently or sometimes even deliberately cross over here. We, we start to build the church. And always remember that the moment when you start to help Jesus build the church. You know what Jesus said to John the Baptist? Jesus said, for I must increase. Ah, and you 
will decrease. Remember, remember what Jesus said? The order is always this. He increases. Alright, it's not the other way around. Is he increased first? Then as he increased, phenomenally, we start to decrease. But if you reverse the order, when you increase, when you and I can build the church finally, when we impose our increase, then Jesus has no chance to increase. He won't decrease. This is what he will do. You step back behind you. That's what Jesus has been doing in the last 2,000 years. With men and women who want and insist to build the church. He goes behind. And he allows, listen, and he allows you to go on. I've seen some of the fastest growing church led by men and women who are greedy, who are adulterous, who are living in sin. I've seen, I've seen churches grow in numbers when leaders are living in sin. Because the Lord is going to let you go on. But only for a time. But only for a time. Do you see this today? And uh, do you know why we love Psalm 23? We need Psalm 23. <laughs> but, it is, it, but it is time now to transit into Psalm 24. Praise his name. You know, Jesus' first words in his message, the first message he preached, he said, Repent. For the church of Jesus Christ is at hand. Jesus Christ is so Christ is He didn't say that in that. Even you know that. He said, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Isn't it wonderful? The kingdom of God has come. At hand means it has come. It has come. But what's the use? It has come. It has come. It's now before you. But what's the use if you don't see it? What's the use if you don't see it? What's the use if you don't seek it? It's there. It's, you know, you know, in our country they have what is known as visit Malaysia. And then when they, in the TV when they when they promote visit Malaysia 2018, they show all the beautiful places in Malaysia. And, and, and one day I was sitting with my wife. I say, "Wow." I'm a Malaysian. My wife is a Malaysian. We're living in Malaysia. And then visit Malaysia is on TV. And they show all the beautiful places, the lakes, the mountains, and the flowers, the animals. I, I said to my wife, is it Malaysia? I didn't know. My wife be my wife. 
Because you don't go. It's already there. You don't go. 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 and seek it. You don't go. and look for it. It's there already. It's already at hand. It's there. It's already at hand. It's there. But you don't even see it. Let alone seek it. Let alone seek it. That's why Jesus said. That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus. Jesus Nicodemus Oh, Nicodemus! Nicodemus said, "Oh, you must be, you must be the Messiah." Oh, you must be the Messiah. Nicodemus, Nicodemus saying to Jesus. Yes. Jesus Messiah Because. No one can say the things and do the things you do. And Nicodemus is not just any Pharisee. He's way at the top there. He's a ruler of the Jews. Nicodemus is not just any Pharisee. And being a, being a ruler of the Jew is very conscious of the kingdom. Oh, there you are. Because it's in the Jewish blood. And this guy, Nicodemus, he's a ruler of the Jew more so. So you must be the one. Oh, I got this one. You must be the one that's going to bring the kingdom down. Oh, that's it. That's it. Finally, these Romans. He's going to get a slap and get kicked out of Jerusalem and go back to Rome. That's why, that's why he was so afraid all, all the other members of the clan will know he went there in the night sneaking to Jesus place oh, he, 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 was, he was excited he, he thought Jesus would say Nicodemus Good on you. Give me a high five. Oh, Nicodemus, just hand me the show. Let's just say high five. He didn't do it. Jesus said to Nicodemus, "You must be born again." Hi, Shukyu. Hi, Shukyu. Hi, Shukyu. Do you have this in Russia? Also, think this. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I thought you were the one going to bring the kingdom. What are you talking about, born again? What are you talking about? You want me to crawl back to my mother's womb? I see you at the age of eight. I hear you at the age of eight. The joy of all of us here tonight. We know what Jesus was looking for. Jesus, you had to reach. Jesus was referring to something on the inside. Jesus, listen, Jesus did not refuse. Jesus did not push away Nicodemus' desire. Jesus He didn't rebuke Nicodemus concerning the coming of the kingdom. Jesus told Nicodemus, this is how the kingdom is going to come about. Before it will one day become an external thing, it must first be an internal thing. Got the point there? Before, before it is going to be an external descent of the kingdom. Nicodemus, it must begin on the inside of a man. And it begins like the birth of a child. The kingdom has to be born into you. The life of the seed of the king. Has to be born into you. And when you are born again, then you will see, then you will see the kingdom. Oh. 
when you see the kingdom, then you will seek the kingdom. Han chlik chay har chay chay yako at hai chikli shteiru hai. Hai har se imat hai timaga tehum. Are you here? Let's go now. That's why men can join the church without being born again. The hair hunte, the hen turk shart the cover soon they have chatted off. And when you are not born again, you sit in the church and never know why you never sought the kingdom. The kingdom is not real to you for all the years. That's why year after year you sit in the church and Psalm 23 is the only Psalm you love the most. So it become like what Adro, my son, told me. It become a therapy. Psalm 23 is a therapy. 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 Therapeutic. It's like a, it's like counseling, you know, like psychology. Ah, that's 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 that. Ah, that's 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 that. Ah, that's 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 he sees the kingdom. Hallelujah. He sees the kingdom. He sees the kingdom here. And that, ex- that was actually what happened when I was born again. For the six months I was I was in trouble. <laughs> I was so dissatisfied. I was born again. But why is it I started to see things in my own life? No one, no one told me. The kingdom has been activated. The kingdom is now in session. Isn't it? The king is sitting on the throne. It's like the parliament, the prime minister has come. Parliament the The parliament is not in session. You can do what you want. You can park your car, do anything, walk around, shout, scream. When the highest authority is sitting on the inside of that building. And only you know that everything on the outside of that parliament have to be in order. Parliament in daughter of a book to the sixteen hour history to Tanner Mitro. The moment when he sits on the inside. I didn't understand. For four years. The, ter- the confusion and the turmoil. Because God, God was establishing his government. I didn't know that I didn't know that I was starting to see the kingdom in my life. I'm starting to be conscious of the demands of the kingdom. Oh, every part of my of my life was beginning to have the light turn on. And so I started to seek the kingdom. See that? I started to seek the kingdom. Praise God. Do you see this now? Psalm 24 is a kingdom orientation psalm. Psalm 23, Psalm 23 is the gentle shepherd of Israel. Psalm 24 is the mighty king of Israel. They will do battle with our lives. Oh, I tell you. I've been a Christian for 43 years. I tell you, some of the battles that God have to have to do with me. 
бурхны надтай хийх хийж байсан зарим тулаануудыг би сандаг. Wow. The battles that God has to do with you. Тантай одоо тантай хийх ёстой. Таны дотор хийх ёстой тэр тулаануд. Because he wants to Because he wants to establish his government. Яа тэр тэгж тулалдах хэвчтэй юм бэ гэхдээ тэр засгалаа байгуулах гэдэг байгаа байхгүй юу? Because there are areas in our lives that he wants to establish his rule. Бидний амьдралд ингээд хэсгүүд хийж байгаа шүү Тэр хэсэг болгон дээр тэр өөр хаанчлыг тогтоох гэдэг юм. Харин бид нар хүсэхгүй байна. Тэгэхээр яг уу? For many of us who are Christian, for many of us who are Christian, God is only ruling a small part. Бид нар христийн амьдралаар амьдарч байхад бидний амьдралын маш жижиг хэсгийг бүрхэн эзэлсэн байдаг. And sometimes we even choose the part that we want God to rule. Оо бид нар бүр даварцсан зай юу? Яг энэ хэсэгт захир бүрхэ нутаг заагаад тогцсон. But there are some <laughs> But there are some part you know we actually put on the no entry sign you know. Тэ бид нар зарим зарим газарт нь бүр юм пайц зүгс. Even God Гадны хүн гадны бүрхэн орхыг хариулна. And even God even God had to go there. Okay. Бурхан ангиал явж байгаа ч та. Оо орж болохгүй гэж ингэ буцаа явж байгаа хэрэг. There's some part that we open the door we don't even have a door we tear the door down. <laughs> Зарим газарт нь бид нар өөр хан хаалга бүгдийг нурааса ороо тав нь ороод ирэхэд орино. Some part is no entry. Зарим газарт нь ямар ч юм хаалга. And then, and then when God start to even try to just knock a little bit. Зарим газар нь болохоор ингэ бүр цоочтой, хаалттай тий. Бурхан бүр ингэ ингэж тогшоод ч орох явж боломж байхгүй. You can hear the rattle of the chain. The locks and chain behind the door. Тэгээ тэр хаалганы цаана одоо өөрчлөгдөх ёстой бүх юмсууд чинь байж байгаа штэ. Хаалган. It just walk away. Тэгээ бурхан ингээд тогшин штэ. Тэр нэг хаалган дүүлий. Тэгмүүд за бойлээ. It's very lock. Амар тогштой юм байна. Яа за бойлээ. Дараа л ирэх штэ. Энэ хэсэг рүү нарчдахгүй байна. Next time I bring a bomb. Дараагийн удаа би ер нь бомб бомб гацрна. Dynamite гацрч байгаа дил бомна. God has gone powerful bombs. Бурханд ямар амар бүмүүд байгаа гэж бодож байна. Yes. You know how to put it in the right place. Тэр тэр цайзыг чинь яаж дэлт татаад яаж өөрчлөлт хийхэд тэр мэднэ дээ. He blow he blow the door away. Тэр хаалга тэгээд яаж blow the chain and blow the lock. Тэгэж хаатсан байж байдаг. You will. Тэр чадна. God knows. Тэгч болно. Бурхан мэднэ. That's who he is. Тэр тэр л бурхан юм да. That's why he's mighty in battle. Тийм л учраас тэр тулаанд агу Some of us are like, God, I don't want to fight you. Тэнэри зарим хэлэх байхад би тантай байлтмаргүй. But God said, no, I want to fight you. Харин бурхан хэлнэ. Би чамд нэгийг үзчихмээр энэ төхөө. Яах юм чи? Because only God knows how many doors has been shut. How many gates has been shut. Зөвхөн бурхан бидний дотор хаалттай, нээлттэй хаалгуудыг мэднэ. Хідэн хаалттай, хідэн нээлттэй. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I hope you still come back tomorrow. Танар маргаш ирдэг байга. And bring along Psalm 24 please. Тэр авчраараа тоо я номо зүгээр. Don't cut it away from your Bible. Библиэс 24-ийг хайчилсан зогсож байгаа танар. Let's let's stand shall we? Бас эц өмөр. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for this time. Энэ цагийн төлөө талархаж байна. Thank you for these dear saints. Thank you for the hearts of these men and women. Thank you for your presence. Come, Lord. Come, thou gentle shepherd of Israel. Is also the king of glory. Your kingdom come. And your will be done. Thank you. Thank you for such a time. Thank you for the rightness of this word. Thank you for the timeliness of this word. For the church here. For the church in Mongolia. Thank you, my God. We receive it from your hands. We thank you. Seal this word in our hearts. Let it be the beginning of a seeing and a seeking of your kingdom. Let no, let no hearts back away. Cause us to be, cause us to be courageous. 
causes to follow you. And make the transition with you. And allow you to do as you please in all of our lives. We thank you. As you stay your word in all of our hearts here tonight. And continue to speak to us throughout this evening. We give you praise. And we give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. There's five five more copies left. If you want if you want it in English, it's here. Тэгээ баг тав тав байсан шүү дээ. Тэгээд 25000 гарч зарж зарж байгаа. 